Mm, Jagradev. You have been given a lifetime to live as you choose. Everybody thinks too small. They think about what they want to eat, where they want to work, what they want to buy, who they want to marry, how many children they want to have. You have to get perspective and realize this is a lifetime. You have been given a lifetime and you will be permitted to live it as you choose. The further back you get within yourself, the more you're able to look at the lifetime as a whole as a sequence of experiences which take place from birth until death. It's an honor to be alive. It's an honor to be born and to exist on this plane, though it be an interesting predicament, spinning on a planet in the middle of nowhere, empty space all around and all this stuff going on. So eventually, I hope you become conscious enough to ask, What is it, now that I am awake and centered within myself, and I can see that I have been given a lifetime, what do I want to do with this? You really only have two choices. It's very simple. It's down to two choices. You may use this life to protect yourself, or you may use your life to free yourself. And that's all. And everything else you do is just a manifestation of one of those two paths. And those paths are mutually exclusive. And that is the truth. And you will come to see that. It is an all or nothing situation. What does it mean to use your life to protect yourself? It means that there comes a point when you awake enough inside that you notice without any question that it ain't so good in there. There's fear. There's insecurity. There's all sorts of vibrations inside that if they get started, they are not enjoyable to live with. There's loneliness, jealousy. There's so many things. So many things. If you live your life avoiding these things, you will live your life for the purpose of protecting yourself. Being intelligent, you have come to notice that certain events, if they unfold outside, can cause a change in your inner state. Somebody can say something. Somebody can do something. Somebody can come. Somebody can go. Somebody can be born. Somebody can die. So many things can happen outside. And they cause a change in your inner state. Things can either change to where the vibrations inside become disturbing, fortunately or unfortunately. It is also true that they can change in a way that make the vibrations inside very smooth, very calm, very peaceful. Somebody says something nice to you, perhaps you become serene. Makes your day. <laughs> you feel right. You can walk through the day, everything's more beautiful. The flowers are a sharper color. The sky is more beautiful. Your friends are more friendly. Somebody says something not so nice, and the opposite happens. So you notice this. You now are back to your two choices. Either you do what the Western mind considers rational, intelligent. And that is you set out to utilize your willpower in order to manipulate and control what people say to you so that the likelihood is they're going to say the thing that makes your day and avoid saying the thing that ruins your day. You learn and try to extrapolate based on past circumstances, what can happen outside that will make your energy flow better or what can happen outside that will make it flow worse. And you use your willpower to manipulate 
and control people, place, and thing so that you maximize the probability of the nice things happen and minimize the probability of the disturbing things happen. Sounds rational, doesn't it? That is one way of living your life. Wow, you mean we're not going to talk about just different ways of doing that? That's normally all there is, is arguments on how to do that the best. No. That entire process falls into the category of devoting your life to protecting yourself. Why is that protecting myself? Because the fact that you can get disturbed means there is something wrong inside of you. It is not what someone said to you that disturbed you. It is you that disturbed you. It is what was already going on inside of you that caused disturbance to take place. If somebody walks up to you who you don't know and they say to you, I want to tell you, I've been sleeping around on my husband. This is interesting. It's like watching as the world turns. Maybe you even feel useful, meaningful. This person came and shared with you. You feel honored, right? Unless it's your wife. (laughs) Then you'll feel so good about it. You see, it's not the words. It's not the words. They're just words. They're just words that somebody is saying in the universe. Those words do not intrinsically carry pain with them. If you're a psychologist, psychiatrist, and somebody shares this with you, you feel good. They're good words, aren't they? Finally, we've had a breakthrough. We're sharing. We're having communication. We're having some depth. Yet, if they're said in another context, they cause tremendous pain, deep pain. Now, are the words painful or are the words good? Are they a signal of a good thing? That is completely dependent on what was going on inside of you. It has nothing to do with the words. In one case, the psychologist or counselor had within them a model that said, I am the type of person that people are comfortable sharing their innermost secrets with. And I am the type of person that can help people by being receptive and open to what they have to talk about and giving them the opportunity of releasing these things and not feeling judged. And this is a model. Now, if the person says this, it fits the model. Therefore, it is uplifting. It is positive. It might make your day that this patient shared with you like that. If, on the other hand, you have a different model, such as this person does not do those sort of things, and this is my relationship, and this is not what's going on here, because I know what's going on, that's part of our relationship, our honesty, and so on, you have a different model. Now, when this person says this, it doesn't match the model. And when it doesn't match the model, what happens? Complete disturbance takes place. To the yogi, to the being of wisdom, they don't get caught in the words. They understand the process. And the process is that if you carry a model inside of what you need and want to be, you have defined the world within that which happens, anything that happens, that matches it, causes the shakti to flow smoother. It is uplifting. That which happens, which is at odds with it, causes friction and disturbance within, and you get all weird. So therefore, it is not the outer situation. It is the inner situation and how it relates to the outer. So again, you have a choice. You either choose to continue building this model inside, this I model, 
I want it this way. I like it this way. I believe in this. I hope for this. This person has this relationship with me. I know what this person is now. I know what this is now. I know what's going to happen by the time I get to be 30 and 40 and 50. And I know what my finance should be. I know what my insurance should be. I know how the house should behave. I know every single thing in the whole world. I know what the kids should grow up to be. I know what they should wear. I know who they like. I know what religion people they should marry. I know every single thing in the whole world. You understand? I got it all put together. How about you? <laughs> okay. You got one big eye in there. And it has figured it all out. You devote your life to that model. And I'm not exaggerating. You devote your life. You see it as truth, as real, as absolute. And you then try as hard as you can till the day you die to make it be reality. How do you make it be reality? Well, you start by not accepting reality because you know darn well if you leave it alone, it ain't going to match your model. I mean, what's the probability that if you just let everything be what it was, it would match what you made up it should be? Very slim. Because you did just make it up, didn't you? He just one day wake up and says, he's supposed to be over there. And he's not supposed to do that. Where'd you get that idea? I made it up. I have a cute little mind. He just made it up. And here he is, my first son. He's going to be a doctor. Right? Where'd you get that idea? I made it up. <laughs> and I'm going to work here at this place. And after two years, I'm going to get promoted to be supervisor. And after three years, I'm going to be the manager. And after four years, he's going to ask me if I want to be vice president. Okay? And where'd you get that idea? I made it up. And you make these things up. Cute, aren't you? You cute little thing. Excuse the button in there. You make these things up and then you honestly and sincerely believe they're going to happen just because you made them up. It's like they're supposed to happen. And you get mad at them if they don't. This is the model. You have built a model in there of this life. And you're not stupid again. You've already caught on that if you don't fight with it, if you don't manipulate it, if you don't anticipate everything that might go wrong and control it so that it doesn't, there's very little probability that it just happened to turn out the way you made it up. So you give it a little encouragement to turn out the way you made it up, don't you? And you use your mind for that. And your mind not only makes up what's supposed to be, but it makes up how to make it be that way. If I were to sneak in there and make a little hole and look in there... What would it be doing? It would be doing what I just said. First it would make up what it thinks it's supposed to be. Then it would think all the time about how to make it that way. And then it would worry all the time. What is worry? That which the mind does in order to bridge the gap between what might happen outside and what you've decided should. So you worry about it. What are you worrying about? about the fact that it might not turn out the way I made it up. Well, you've got a lot of worrying to do. You better get started real early. All right? Because I don't clue you in. It ain't going to end up the way you made it up. No matter how hard you try, it ain't going to end up the way you made it up because you just made it up. And the world has a reality to it. It is following these laws. They're called cause and effect. All that ever was is creating what is. And you then have to go out there and fight with reality in order to make it be the way you want. Do you see that you do that? Do you understand you do that all the time? When you put your clothes on in the morning. Well, I've decided I want him to look at me that way and I want to feel real powerful. I want people to give me the job and I want to get this thing and so on. So what should I wear so that people will be affected this way and I can, in other words, what can I manipulate through my clothes? Anybody ever done that? What can I manipulate through how I wear my hair? What can I manipulate through any perfume I put on? What can I manipulate through the car that I drive? In other words, you're just trying to project externally that which you dreamt up inside in the hope to make it that way. And like I said, if you get it the way you want it, you're right. It makes the Shakti flow. It can really make the Shakti flow. I mean, you can get so high just because it got the way you want it. You made up that she liked you, and one day she walks in and she says, I really like you. Woo-hoo, wow. What if you made up that she doesn't like you, and you don't like her at all? And she walked in and said, I like you. You'd be depressed. 
Do you understand? You're doing it. It has no reality out there. You are doing it because you are making up what you want. So if you get to the point where you realize that now that I've made it up, I'm caught. Because the only way I can be happy is to make it be the way I want. And if it ever turns out the way I don't want, I get really miserable, really miserable, depressed, heavy duty. All right, so what do I need to do? I need to protect myself. Protect yourself from what? From myself. When it's all said and done, that's what you're protecting yourself from. You're afraid of what you can feel in there. And so you protect yourself from that. And if you're not careful, you'll spend your whole life doing that. Do you see that? How easy that would be. You'll spend your whole life. You'll find something that matches. It'll feel good for a minute. What will you do? You will cling. You'll reach out. You'll try to grab it. You'll try to own it. You'll try to keep it. You'll try to manipulate, control. Why? So that it will stay there because you need it. And the fear of losing it eventually will take away the joy of having it. There are people who go out. There's the latest trick. I think it's hilarious. And why are paintings worth anything? Because they're beautiful and they have an effect on you and they're just gorgeous to look at. All right? Now that we've done that, people go out and buy the best masterpieces that have ever been painted for millions and millions of dollars and they lock them in vaults, in safes, in banks and never ever look at them. They actually do that. Now that's hilarious. That is the epitome of what we're talking about. It brought you joy so you cling to it and protect it so tightly that you're worried about losing it so there's no joy anymore. And this is what you do with everything. And you end up living a life of protection and worry and manipulation and control. There's an alternative? Yes, there's an alternative. You can live a life of freeing yourself. From what? From yourself. So you either live a life of protecting yourself from yourself or you live a life of freeing yourself from yourself. How do you free yourself from yourself? You watch the neurosis and you see that it's always in there doing this process. It's always in there caring what people think about it. It's always in there trying to figure out what's going on so it can be a step ahead of it so that it doesn't have to go through any pain or do these different things. And what do you do? You give it up. What do you mean? You give it up. You let it go. You don't do that. It's like a whole nother life. It's so big it's ridiculous. You don't do it? Right, you don't do it. How do you not do it? You sit there and say, if this is meant for me, it will come here, it will be here. I will honor it, worship it, share with it. If it is here, if it is not meant for me, it will go. If it needs to go, it will go. I will not keep it here. But it could be painful when it goes. Only because there is pain inside. If there is pain inside of me, then the situation of change will shake the waters and cause the disturbances in the bottom to come to the surface. Such pain is impurity. So you let it go. You let it go also. And you start to go through the process of undoing all that you've done. And this is your purification. And this is spirituality. And this is the process of yoga. And you can do it. Every one of you can do it. You just merely stop going with the part of you that made up what you think will make you happy. Because you cannot be happy while you're fighting with life. You cannot be happy while you come into life with a preconceived notion of what it's supposed to be doing. So instead you come into life saying, Oh life, you are your own self. You have a history. You were here before I came. You will be here after I leave. You are what gave birth to all people and all creatures. Who in the world am I to tell you what to do? You should just be doing your thing. Let me experience you. Let me see what it's like to be alive instead of being afraid to be alive. And so you let life unfold around you. And if she brings something to you, you dance with it. And if it moves, it moves. And the most important point is when it changes, it will cause disturbance in you. You will see this. 
you can let those go. You just let them go. I don't know how to say it any clearer. They will come up, you will experience them, and you release them. You have to be willing to go through these things. It's almost as if what you want to ask is, I'm willing to go through it, now how do you go through it without pain? What you have to be willing to go through is the pain. The pain is purification. That's what it is. It's not wrong. What you feel in your heart is the impurities being removed. If what you do is say, I don't want to go through this, you will have to hide from it for the rest of your life. Yet every one that you go through, every one that is removed from your heart, you will feel freer. You'll feel more open. You will realize that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. You start to change your model. Eventually you get to the point where the only model you're building inside is as follows. The way I want it to be is the way it is. I want it to be the way it is. I want him to be the way he is because I want to get to know him. I don't want him to be the way I want him to be because then I'll never get to know him. I already know what I made up about him. <laughs> if I want to know it, I just go ask the mind. Oh, mind, what's he like? Oh, well, you know, well, 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 tell me all about it. But what fun is that? I'm just in myself again. I stay caught in myself. What's she like? He'll tell me. What's he like? He'll tell me. He'll tell me everything about everything. Truth is, he doesn't know a thing. He's just making it all up. And the reason you're doing that is to protect yourself. You'll see that. So if you live life to free yourself, you honor things for what they are. You come to know people because God created them, not because you made up what they're supposed to be. And each and every moment you honor that way. And if you have a job, you put your whole being into the job. I can't imagine that someone will come to me and say, no, I'm not going to put my heart in this job because I'm not going to stay here long. I, I don't want to end up staying here. All right? Maybe a year or two. And therefore, I just don't want to put too much into it. You just wasted two years then. Same thing with a relationship. Well, I don't want to get too involved with saying I'll keep my distance because this is not really the person I want to marry. What are you going to do that with all of life? You're going to protect yourself. You're protecting yourself. You have to not do that. How? There is no way that you ever will stop protecting yourself until you stop feeling that you need protection. And the only way you will do that is when you are willing to go through the changes that come up inside. There is stuff in there. There's deep darkness in there. You hear me? There's insecurity. There's fear. There's all kinds of stuff. I don't care who you are. It's in there, isn't it? You see it all the time. You just don't want to see it. You have to stop doing that or it will run your life, period. It will run your whole life. It will decide everything you say. It will decide what you wear. It will decide who you're with. It will decide every single thing. And that is a wasted life. A whole life is wasted because you lived your life avoiding the problems inside of you. So, if you're willing to say, I want this to come up, if there's jealousy and fear in there, then it must come up and I'll let go. Because I ain't going to bring it up, I'll tell you that right now. So if life brings it up on its own, then it's time for me to deal with it. It means that the stars are right, that the circumstances are right, and these things will come up. They're not going to kill me, I'm just watching them. Jealousy is something you feel. It's not who you are. You are the subject, it is the object. Fear is something you see. You feel fear. Who feels it? You who feels the fear have no fear. That's what's hilarious. You who is aware that there's fear in there is fearless. It is the self. You're a very great being in there. You're the consciousness. You have to be willing to let the objects go so that you're free to be the subject. And this is how you come to self-realization. As you hang out with yourself instead of with what you see. And so you let life unfold. You put your whole being into whatever's in front of you. And whatever must go on inside of you goes on inside of you. If you're able to handle that, you will grow like a rocket ship. If you will let life be what it is, put your whole being into whatever it brings before you every moment, and let whatever must go on inside of you go on inside of you, you are now sitting in the self. You're sitting in witness consciousness. And if you can do this, you will become free. And you will not be afraid anymore. 
and you will not have to worry about anything and your mind will spontaneously become quiet. You will be able to walk through the most unbelievable circumstances in life all going on at the same time and your mind will just be there. Oh, that too. Oh, that too. Oh, that too. Wow, look what's coming now. Wow, far out. And you just be in there watching creation unfold around you. Totally unafraid. And no matter what's going on, when it's time to go to bed, you lay your head down and now you say, bye-bye. <laughs> bye, I'll be back later. And you fall asleep instantaneously. Then you wake up. Ah, hi, guys. We're back. Wonder what's going to happen today. And you live your life. You live your life. And it's so full. It's so whole. It's so complete. And every being you meet, you will love. And every circumstance that comes before you, you will honor and enjoy working with. But if you use your life to let go of the model, if you use your life to free yourself, you use it for that, you will know that as you grow every day that you are more ready for whatever unfolds. And every day is a new day. And every person you meet is a new person. Every situation is brand new. And you will have so much love and freedom and peace. And nothing can go wrong because you haven't defined right. <laughs> it's just unfolding. Perhaps you're rich and then you have that. And perhaps then you lose everything and then you have that. And then perhaps it all comes back and then you have that. So what? So what? Every single thing that happens is an experience. And if you're not doing it, if you're just open and receptive, it's all just what God is bringing to you. Why won't you accept whatever He wants you to experience? Do your best. Experience it. If it's painful and you feel lost, let the purification take place. Honor it. Be there. Everything is beautiful, except for what you said wasn't. Everything is beautiful, except for what you decided wasn't. And then you make yourself miserable. So those are your choices. You may spend this entire life, you, may, you must devote your life to something, because you're here. You may devote your life to protecting yourself. You know darn well what that feels like. Or you may devote your life to freeing your soul, to freeing yourself. No matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. No matter what you've done, it makes no difference. You just start to reverse the process, to let go instead of cling to not go with the things that are demanding that you protect, but instead release them and explore what's behind them. So this is the process of yoga. Eventually, you must purify your stuff. You can't run around with this stuff in there. You have to let it go, and God will help you. Well, the life will help you. It will bring it up, and every day you will have an opportunity to let go of a piece of you. You notice that? Every day you have an opportunity to let go of a piece. Maybe that opportunity won't come back for that piece. Don't take the chance. Let it go when it comes up and you will grow very well. Mm,